Welcome to Mr Chalk's Revision Tips. In this video, we will look at the structure of the digestive system, enzymes and nutrients found in food. So, most of the digestive food passes through epithelial cells in the gut wall and is carried into our blood. We need to start off by looking at the different nutrients that we find and we need in the food that we're digesting. So we have carbohydrates. So carbohydrates can be simple sugars like glucose or lactose. They can also be more complex like starch that we find in rice and pasta. Carbohydrates are important to the body because glucose is used in cellular respiration. Proteins are large molecules made up of amino acids. So each protein is made up of hundreds of amino acids and will go and fold up into the correct shape. Our body needs the amino acids from the protein to go and make different amino acids and different proteins within cells. And fats have a range of different uses in the body. So fats are used to cushion vital organs and such forth. They can be used to insulate the body and help maintain body temperature. And finally, they can act as a long-term store of energy. So the digestive system kind of looks like this. So we start off with the mouth at the top, with the salivary glands, then the esophagus, then the stomach, then a little section called the duodenum, where the pancreas and gallbladder go and connect, then the small intestines, followed by the large intestines, etc. So throughout the digestive system, we have enzymes working to break down different molecules. So one way to consider this is by something called the lock and key model. So each enzyme will only go and bind to a specific molecule. When the active site of an enzyme binds to that, that holds it in place, which then allows the molecule to be broken up and released. The enzyme can then go and help catalyze another reaction. The mouth is the beginning of the digestive tract. In the mouth, we go and we chew food. The chewing of the food helps increase its surface area. We also will go and add saliva. Saliva will go and lubricate the food and it also contains a carbohydrate which is called amylase. The amylase will go and break down starch molecules into glucose molecules. The pH in the mouth is around pH 7, which is the optimum pH for a carbohydrate to work. So some key questions that you might want to think about is how is the surface area of the food increased? Well, we go and we chew it up. What in the mouth is producing the saliva? The salivary glands are producing the saliva in the mouth. And what role does carbohydrates play? Carbohydrates breaks down long carbohydrates into smaller sugar molecules. So it might break down starch into glucose, for instance. After the mouth, the food is then pushed down the, the esophagus towards the stomach. The process that pushes it down is called peristalsis. All peristalsis is, is almost a wave of contractions of muscles would go and squeeze the food all the way from the mouth down to the stomach. So it's not gravity that's pulling it down, it's the fact that the food is being pushed down by muscles contracting. After the esophagus, the food then enters the stomach. The stomach produces hydrochloric acid and other gastric juices. 
it also produces the enzyme pepsin. The stomach will go and churn food up which helps break it up even more and digest it. Pepsin is an enzyme so it's a protease and it will break down proteins into amino acids. The optimum pH for pepsin to work is around pH 1 which is why stomach acid is secreted into the stomach. So some key questions to think about is what effect does churning food churning have on food? It helps break it down so it increases the rate of digestion. What pH do we find in the stomach? It's around pH 1 and that's because you get stomach acid. And what does a protease catalyze? Proteases catalyze the breakdown of protein into amino acids. So a question that you might be asked is you might be given some information like this. So suggest two reasons why starch is not digested in the stomach. So again, think about what we previously said about the enzymes that break down starch and the pH that they work at. Pause the video, have a think about it, then go and have a look at the answer. So the answer could contain something like amylase is not produced by the stomach. The stomach is at the wrong pH for the enzyme to work. So the enzyme would be denatured. And the stomach or amylase only works in the neutral conditions. You might say like the pH that you would find in the mouth. After the stomach, the food passes down into the duodenum where you get a connection from the gallbladder and the pancreas. The gallbladder goes and contains and stores bile which is produced in the liver. Bile has two main functions. It will go and neutralize the stomach acid and it will emulsify big droplets of fat. So that causes big droplets of fat to break down into smaller ones which increase its surface area. The pancreas produces the enzyme lipase. So lipase will go and break down large fats into fatty acids and glycerol. Lipase works best at around pH 7.5. After that we enter the small intestines. So the small intestines is where the absorption of food into the bloodstream is happening. The small intestines have lots and lots of villi, so villi are finger-like structures, to increase its surface area. So some of the key adaptations of villi that you need to know are that there's lots of them which increase the surface area. They have a good blood supply which carries nutrients away and helps maintain the concentration gradient. And they are covered in cells called microvilli that also increase the surface area and have lots of mitochondria to ensure that food can be actively and nutrients can be actively transported in against the concentration gradient if needs be. So a few key questions to think about. So how does the villi increase the surface area? It's the fact that there's lots of villi and each of those villi are covered by a microvilli. How does the villi maintain the concentration gradient? It has a good blood split blood supply and wide microvilli cells have lots of mitochondria so they can carry out active transport and transport nutrients into the cells against the concentration gradient. So one question that you could be asked are the small intestines aligned with millions of villi. The diagram shows the structure of a villus. In the small intestines some of these products of digestion are absorbed into the blood by active transport. How do microvilli and mitochondria help with this process? So pause the video, then go and have a look at the answer. So the microvilli will go and increase the surface area. The mitochondria will release energy which can be used for active transport. After the small intestines, 
we go and we reach the large intestines the large intestines is where the excess water is absorbed from the food that is still left and passing through so if we think about the problem that we'd have if all of the water wasn't reabsorbed if the water wasn't reabsorbed then a person might suffer from diarrhea which can lead to any number of medical problems and can lead to severe dehydration thanks for watching 